Welcome back to I Wanna Hug That Gator. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Not one night. The house was standard for a house in this neck of the woods or neighborhood. It's a one story place, but it looks pretty spacious. Definitely a family house. I walk up to the stone steps past the front door and ring the doorbell. The grocery bag wrapped around my fingers is starting to chafe a bit. I could have just came right away, but I felt bad coming over empty handed, so I got something for the party. A simple salad bowl from one of the local stores on the way over. It doesn't seem like much, but as my mom taught me, it's courteous to come to a party with something other than nothing. Actually, I realize how ill-prepared I look for a December celebration. With Damien mentioning a pool, everyone else must either be wearing casual clothes or clothes. Meanwhile, here I am looking over the pool. Not like I could have thought of bringing this room from the school. The door swings open and out steps Damien. And go! Wow, man, you're crazy early. Come bearing gifts. Yep, here I am. I didn't want to come empty handed, so I stopped by the local store and got a salad. Oh, you didn't have to, dude. Seriously, though, you really didn't have to. My family and I are carnivores. But thanks. Still, it's like not even 10, man. Oh, wow. Uh, me a time, so... No, 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 that's my bad. Still, since you're here already, come on in. Well, I don't, I feel silly. Damien still accepts the grocery bag and chucks it off to the side somewhere. Come on, everyone's back. Come on, everyone's out back right now. He turns back, making for a sliding door on the opposite end of the house. Following after, I barely have time to take in what I think of the living room and the dining room. There's a number of toys strewn about. Form dark guns and loose game controllers. Damien opens the glass door and gives me a push out of the house. Hey everyone, we got a special guest already. Stepping out onto the wooden deck, I'm surprised to see the pool in the yard. To the left of me is what looks like an older, heavier set version of Damien. Oh, I forgot it's Hank Hill. I can't- Oh, this is gonna be bad. Well, howdy there! Hello, sir. I'm Inko. He shifts the barbecue tongs to his left hand and gives a shake to his hand. Rand pain. You can just call me Randy, though. I hide the grimace as we shake hands. Feeling what I'm guessing is a very sticky marinade now clinging to my palm. Didn't think someone would come this early. I just finished getting the good stuff all closed up. As soon as he lets go, he focuses back on piles of different meats heaped up next to the grill. Meanwhile, I grab some nearby napkins to wipe the sauce from my hands. Oh, what's on the menu? Mm, let's see here. We got brisket planks. Rib sirloin, tenderloin, top sirloin, bottom sirloin, round and shanks. That's a lot of count. All, marina all marinated with a special mix of wet rub and dry rub season. Oh wow, that's a lot of brandy. Uh, me, Damien, and Soap will be doing the baby chips. If you're interested, I'll let you lend a hand too if the missus doesn't both get the carrot around too much. Sure, sounds fun. I never actually grilled before. It's not tough, you'll see. Now that I'm here, I can finally ask Damien the question that's been on my mind. Hey Damien, so I've been curious this whole time. What exactly is the celebration anyway? Oh yeah, I haven't told you. Well, you see when... 
before Damien can properly explain, a motherly voice cuts him off. Damien, sweetie, you shouldn't keep your baby brother waiting any longer. At the mention of a younger symbol, a tiny Damien clone jumps over the deck railing and... Acid punch! Oh my god, why? Why? Vinny. Look, bro! Just like Power Raptors! I told you I could do it! I'm so sorry, Inko. Vincent, this is why I don't want you watching those violent shows. Off I go! The young dino isn't listening. He's already run off to find another victim. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Was that really acid? <laughs> no, no. But here, you should wipe that off. Now. I take a towel, hand it to me, and wipe off the splotch on my pants from where Vincent had punched. Wow, you want to... Dilophosaurus spit only gets more acidic after they reach puberty. I begin to rub the spittle from my pants with a bit more urgency. Thankfully, he's more... He's more me than his mother, otherwise you'd need a new pair of pants. Uh, wait. That's an actual thing? Randy laughs. So, you must be Damien's new friend from school. Indeed I am. Damien's mom head pops up to the side of the deck with a tired smile. Hello, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Oh, I didn't know we'd have a guest so soon. I would have cleaned up more. You can just call me Sophia, dear. Speaking of school, Damien told me that you were there. Why'd you be going there today of all days? Honestly, I didn't even realize today was a holiday. I usually mark them on my calendar, but it must have flown over my head. Oh, it's no worry that it's mainly us dinos who celebrate it. Yeah, Damien told me a bit about it, but I'm not sure I fully understand. In that case, I'd be more than glad to clue you in. It's called Summer's End, as today marks the last warm day of the season. After this, fall and winter starts rolling in. Huh, interesting. Well, this will probably make me sound stupid for asking, but how can we celebrate it? To put it simply, the cold might be manageable for warm bloods, but for us reptiles, it's no bueno. So you we spend the last day soaking in the sun and enjoying the warm weather before it starts getting chilly. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Next thing you know, everyone's wearing extra layers and putting up the heat lamps. Though it apparently used to be Ice Age levels of frigid back in my granddad's age, so I guess we consider ourselves lucky. Otherwise, we'd be nothing but a couple of popsicles with our tails for sticks. The patriarch lets out a laugh that's as infectious as his son's. He wipes a tear from his eyes and he goes back to flipping the meat on the grill. Anywho. We're gonna start cooking up the food, so make yourself comfortable. Thank you, sir. I mean, Randy. Da While Damien's dad attempts the grill, I move to the banister overlooking the pool. It's filled with a couple of aquatic toys and air-filled floaties. Man, I wish I had a place that. Man, I wish my place had a pool. I know that feeling. Well, I do have extra jeans at home. Burning one pair won't be a huge issue, I guess. Now, on second thought, it'd be really annoying to deal with drying off and going home. I wonder how deep... Whoosh! Ah! Ah! The hell are you doing here? I was invited! Focus on her face, not the other thing. What the heck are you doing here? I live here, moron. Crap, right? Damien even told me on the way. Uh, anyways. No, really, why are you here? Nobody was at school when I got there. Huh? Yeah. Check the doors and everything. They announced the holiday yesterday in homeroom, didn't you hear it? That's what Liz said over the PA system? I thought it was the school's anthem or something. Uh, no wonder everyone was staring as I saluted. Must have not been paying attention. But yeah, I asked Damien what was up. He said there's some event going on and invited me. Olivia sinks a, a bit into the water, actually. Uh, stupid question, but... 
Are you really okay to swim? There's this glare. There's that glare again. Of course. Why wouldn't I be? Uh, well, you know. Thankfully, she gets what I'm saying. Sorry? She simply rolls her eyes. I like it in the water. Mm, I kind of wish I knew about all this earlier. I'd have brought my trunks. Ew, no, I'm not sharing my pool with you. What? Why not? Instead of answering me verbally, Olivia tail whips some water at me like a large wave. Yo, Inko, come check this out. Olivia takes the opportunity to sink back in the water. I think she's doing a weird version of a dead man's float. Well, whatever. What's Damien yelling about? Yeah, Damien? Well, first, my little bro has something to say to you. Sorry for giving you an acid punch, Inky. Looks like he taught his younger sibling about my nickname, too. It's all right, er... Vinny! Vinny extends his hand for a shake, though it's obscured by his sleeve. And secondly, we need a few chairs out here. We got some folding ones, but also some from the kitchen. Got it. They're cheap wood. It's not real heavy. After the chairs, we can do the table together. Mom would be pissed if that got dropped. Why? It's the only one we got. And after everything's set, we can play some fun K, little man. Vincent, Vincent grins and bolts back towards the house. Damien chuckles and we both follow after the kid. Uh, the table drops a few inches and we are able to lift it with a hard crash back onto the tile. I'd be worried about cracks, but the floor is already pretty shattered around here from the, ye from the years. This table must actually be their gold storage and it's painted to look like wood. That's the only explanation. We, can't, we catch our breaths and give our strained muscles a moment to relax. Why can't Livia help us? She's super strong. Olivia's enjoying herself in the pool, bro. We don't want to ruin her time. Her chair thing is wheels. We can use that. I think it might be a bit small. Aw, oh, no fair. She's gonna go get go to her room soon. Why can't she help? Aw, oh, come on, not in front of any guests, yeah? It's true, though. You don't know that, come on. Damien's mini-me pouts. I think I got a better grip on the table now. Let's try one more time. Okay, I'm ready. One, two. Wait. Huh? What's up? Mom must have been talking about the plastic table in the garage, not the dining room table. You're right! What? Guess we gotta haul this thing back into the dining room, fellas. Great. He has eyes. After getting the suspiciously heavy table back inside, Damien and I carry the much lighter plastic one out the door. As I catch my breath, I notice the younger dinosaur is gone. Maybe he ran off to do something else? Either way, I guess it's now time to ask. Hey, Damien. Hey, Damien. Yeah? What was that about Olivia going to her room? Huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah. An awkward silence fills the air for a few moments. It's just... She doesn't really stick around for family events like this is all. Regularly, regular introvert stuff, you know? No big deal. And your parents are okay with that? Why wouldn't they be? She's her own person. Right. She usually makes appearances for food, though. Hey, speaking of food, you want to go check on the grill? Why? There's no way the food is done by now. I know. I just like the smell. Oh, all right then. Sweet, let's go! We make our way over to where Damien's dad is matting the grill. I catch a whiff of the spices and marinades applied to all the meat. Sophia accompanying him, helping, the, helping to place the meat on the grill. 
How is it coming along, Pops? You making any how, how I like them? You know it, son. Have a look for yourself. He, start, he steps aside and lets the gaze of the variety of barbecues set over the flames. The smell of, the, of it cooking and the symphonic sizzle sound has my mouth watering in seconds. Good, right? I'll say! Randy used a pair of tongs to grab a piece of steak that looks halfway cooked. The secret is that you gotta let these babies have some time getting seared on each side. That way it looks real at home in the flat. Blah! Whoops. There's a bunch of silence between everyone as we all stare down at the piece of meat on the floor. Eh, it's not ruined. Hey, Olivia, you want it? A pair of eyes pop over the edge of the pool. Sure, toss it in. What's this now? Randy proceeds to chuck the steak right into the water as one would do with a chum to attract fish. Whoosh! Jeez! Anywho, since you're our first guest, Inko, you get the honor of getting choice picks. Which one you want? Oh, uh, I, I don't want to impose or anything. All nonsense. Besides, better to get in your pick now before the other guests arrive later. Hey, I think of... Think of it as payback for all the sodas and chips you've been getting us. Come again? Uh, well, I guess a burger is more convenient. I don't get to attend a family barbecue every day. Excellent choice, Inko. Want it rare, medium rare, or well done? Hey, Inko, go for the rare. Damien licks his lips as he says that. Rare, what the- oh, carnivores, right. I'm pretty sure a raw burger would kill me. Rare isn't raw, you- I'll take my burger well done. You fucking heretic! Yeah, I'm sure you'll want ketchup with it too. Fuck you. Come on, Damien. One well dug burr coming right up. Yeah, not going to take any chances. Just saying, you're missing out, amigo. I'm pretty sure your mother was just messing with him. We'd never serve that sort of thing to a guest. There's no way we could afford the suit. Mr. Randy lets out a hearty guffaw as he lets the burger. as he left. as he left the burgers on the his grill. This? It's alright, son. Though it may not look like it, Volcadra has its share of humans. From what I know, you guys can eat about anything, right? Raw meat aside. I mean, yeah, I guess. Must be nice to be able to just grab whatever's on sale at the market. Meat prices these days are getting pretty crazy. He's right. I've seen some of the synthetic meat around. That might be cheaper. Why not try it? Man, we're dead. <laughs> the girl's glaring at us. Sorry. There's one taboo I stumbled headfirst into. Noted. I, uh, better change the subject before things get more awkward. So, hey, Damien. I've been curious this whole time. What exactly is this Summer's End celebration anyways? Didn't my dad tell you earlier? It's the last warm day of the year or whatever. Yeah, I get that part, but why is it a holiday? Oh, uh, that? Hmm. Actually, I don't really remember either. Guess I should have been paying more attention at school. It's a bit concerning that he doesn't know much about his own culture. He's currently celebrating. Actually, it probably doesn't even need a reason. Why would you? It's just the last warm day of the year. Any excuse to go to for get-togethers is fine in my book. The kid flumps down hard on the grass, in a way only children can without shattering something. Aw, and we... we don't gotta go to school. It's nice and warm and we get to eat real good. I think those Mayans had the right idea. Vinny. Mayans? Yeah, hey, Inko. Are you a... Aura, right, it's about ready. It's about time for the guests to show up too, isn't it? They'll be here any minute. Oh, Olivia. Across the yard, Olivia contently drifted to the middle of the pool. Though, a look came across her face upon hearing Damien's mom, and she began paddling towards the raised deck. Are you going in soon? Yeah. Are you 
sure you don't want to wait until the other guests get here? Yeah, wait till the food's ready so we can all eat together. I'd rather not. I just have a lot of art stuff I have to do, sorry. Damien's little brother steps out from the small deck. Like you said we'd play sometime today. She tries to back her uncertain tone but up with a shaky smile. Maybe later, Vinny. Uh, have fun. She lifts herself in the pool and kneels atop her chair. I'm confused of how her legs work, but my best guess is that perhaps they only they only above the knee. Turning about, about, her hands carefully set her feet down on the chair's foot rests. Fully settled in the chair, Olivia rolls herself to the sliding back door of the house. I think the table is just about set. Now we really are just waiting for the others. Damien, has your friend texted you at all? Yeah, Liz said she'd be here about now. Oh, it's Liz? Nice. She's bringing her uncle, too. Oh, snap, that's nice. I'll burst out the brewskis then. In fact, Damien shields his eyes and looks upwards behind me. I turn, too, but at this angle, I can't see anything. Yeah, they're in the front yard. I'll go get them. Damien rushes through the back door into the house. A moment later, he emerges again as if to show off a new guest. Come on. Come on, don't make it weird. Hi, everyone. Oh, Inko, you're here. What voice? I think that's the voice I gave her. Yeah, I got roped in. Neat. Uh, come on, Uncle Mike. They're here. Oh, no. Hey, now, I'm not that old. A giant figure lumbers through the doorway. That is not what I told him to get. Hey, Michael! Hey, Michael! Brandy? How have you been? The two pat each other on the back, giving firm handshakes. Doing, doing good, doing good. How about yourself? What's with the ridiculous getup? Is it Mardi Gras? <laughs> no, nothing like that. I've been trying to relate a bit more to the younger generation recently. It seems we're just too different these days and all. Oh, come on, leave that stuff to the kids. Then he sees me. Huh? Mr. Ferris? You know him? Yes, we've met. He takes the same train as me. He's been helping me out, recommending I try this chain out. Liz jerks her head in my direction furiously. I'm gonna get it later. Oh god, really regretting the handshake now. I think he popped all my bones at once. The food will be ready soon and go. Your turn on the grill. Oh, uh, don't worry, kid. All you gotta do is keep an eye on the meat and make sure they don't catch fire. Damien's father leaves after I nod. The rest, too, heading to where Damien, Vinny, and I had just set the chairs and tables. Turning to the grill with a grimace, I swallow my nerves and take up the tongs. Right, nothing to worry about. Okay, nothing bad so far. Hey! Or sorry, I keep wanting to do that with her. Hey, fuck it, yeah. Hey! Ah! Oh. Sorry. Hey, Liz, what are you doing here? Oh, everyone else is talking about Randy's cooking, and I figured I'd see what's on the menu. What do you think I'm doing? Why on earth are you getting my uncle to dress like he's going to do a music video? Hey, he asked me for help. You thought that was a good uh, that was good help? Yes, he just didn't take it right. Across the yard, Vinny's jumping at the shiny object. Mr. Ferris caves and lends it to him. See, problem solved. Ignoring Vinny now, running around like a gangster. Oh man, whatever, whatever. What's actually cooking? I motion the silver tray spread out next to the grill. It's a lot of meat. Actually, aren't you a herbivore, Liz? I am, but I think Damien thought ahead for me. 
Wait, wasn't that the salad I brought? I knew he wouldn't forget about me like that. Anyways, is, Eliz is Olivia out here? She was just in the pool, decided to go inside. Liz's head stills for a moment as if she's in thought. Apparently it's a common thing with her. Yeah... I was hoping she'd have stuck around for once. So she does this often? Every time Damien's folks throw a party, she slips away to her room. I sometimes see her at the window. Her eyes motion to me to turn and look at a particular window. I can't really see from this angle. Why wouldn't why would now be any different then? Liz shoots me a knowing look. What? Well, I figured she'd open up a little. She's was opening up a little to you. I mean, I guess. To some degree. Not like I was having any frame of reference. At best, I kind of just talk to Olivia now. What did you just say, Sam? Why? What? You just hissed at me? No. Then what? Oh God! Spinning around to see something caught fire. I grab whatever it is, the tongs, and flail around, hoping the air would put it out. It works well enough, but it's pretty burnt. Well, that's one. Lo that's one lost cause. I give the piece a charcoal, a careful look, and yeah, that doesn't look edible at least. I put it to the side and turn back to face Liz. Anyway, what were you saying about Olivia opening up? Yeah, it's strange, but also good. <laughs> Sorry. Certain a bit surreal after all this time. Liz lets out a laugh and shrugs. Well, it's a shame, but it is what it is. Anyway, I want to go catch up with the others. See you around. Liz returns to the rest of the gathering, leaving me alone with the grill once again. Burnt pieces of meat aside, the rest of the food is looking good. Still, I'm not exactly the best grill master. Not like it matters too much, Damien's folks, whether the food actually cooked or not, it's purely an aesthetic matter. A couple more flips of the meat is brown and, and sizzling, which is good enough in my book to put them along with the other finished pieces. I think I'm about done with my shift. Damien's was, turn was next. He's just going to be wrapping up the last few pieces. It doesn't take me long to spot him chatting with Liz, who's enraptured with whatever guaranteed high-concept discussion they're having. Hey, Damien! Damien's frill things perk a bit as he turns around to face me. Your turn on the grill. Alright, you got it, hombre. He waves Liz over and takes a firm hold of the spatula. Okay, time to get more. He suddenly pauses his eyes fall upon the charred remains of a once juicy, flavor and savory piece of meat. He picks up the piece of the meat and inspects it before chomping down on it with a single bite. Okay, I'll finish cooking the last piece. Inky, if you'd be awesome, dude, can you start serving the others what, what, what's ready for chowing? I give Damien a nod before grabbing a tray of cooked meat. I take the tray over to the eagerly waiting crowd with all with all the care to be expected from someone surrounded by very hungry meat-eating saurians. Upon seeing the platter of delectable and edible flesh, stop stop whatever they are doing and begin to gather around the table. And then I said, well, it's cause you look like a student yourself, miss. Huh. <laughs> oh, that's rich coming from you. Me, 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 me. Is finally here, Vincent. Now remember your manners. Uh, uh, hopefully, my, with my salad, too. Seems like everyone's having a pretty good time with their meal. They even eat the ones I cooked, though I can see Damien's little brother making a slight face of disgust. Still winds up chomping on the meat anyway. All in all, I'm pretty satisfied with how my cooking turned out. I take a seat next to Damien and Liz and prepare my meal before I dig in. Gotta go to the tried and true, catch up and nothing more. My man! Yes, that's how I eat burgers. With my hamburger prepared, I go in for a first bite. Well, sometimes I use cheese. Unless you're, unless you're like, grilling the, um, the onions. I like those too. Gotta say, Damien's dad did a great job with the patty. So, what do you think, Inko? 
I give a thumbs up and smile as best I can with a full mouth. The elderly dinosaur gives me a toothy, saucy stain grin in return. I can see where Damien gets that toothy grin of his. Savoring the well-cooked meat patty and buns, with each bite I slowly lose myself in the party's mood. Though I feel more ancillary from it. Seeing the adults lost in work talk while Damien and Liz are handling the excitable Vinny. Humming around a mouthful of burger, my eyes wander. The entire yard is smaller than mine, and there are tons of toys scattered in the low-cut grass. Not too many plants either, just the grass and a couple of shrubs running alongside the fence. The word quaint comes to mind. Maybe intimate? I could picture the kinds of events that could happen back here. I shake my head, clearing my photographer's mind away. It's Damien's place, private property. I'd have to ask before I do anything camera related. Thinking about it though, I do have my camera securely stored in my backpack inside the house. Part of me considers grabbing it as I look back towards the house, I spy a certain someone at their window. Olivia leers out across the yard. She's too far away to tell what exactly she's staring at. That must be her room then. Her gaze shifts a bit and I, can, I, and I still can't see what she's looking at, but it's in my direction, or Damien, he's sitting next to me. I carefully trace her eyes and her focus leaning side and slowly coming to the plate in my hand. Checking back, she's laser focused on something, I wonder. I slowly lift the plate up and Olivia's head tilts upwards with it. I lower it and she lowers her head tilts downwards. Part of me wants to test this further, except that it'd be a real waste of food. Whatever illusion she was under is shattered with a shake of her head. I can hear Olivia's annoyed growl from here as she turns her snout up at me and returns to whatever it is she was doing. So she does want some, why not come out? Well, I'm sure nobody would mind if I just brought a plate in and left it. Besides, my fingers are sticky from the food, from the, all the finger food, to the point where this, where they stick to my paper plate. It's actually kind of gross now that I remember why I avoid it normally. Ungluing my fingers from the plate, Damien's mother notices my plight. You can use the kitchen sink for that, Inko. Or the pool! Sticking my thoroughly marinated fingers into the pool? That just seems like a future issue for her and ever has to clean that up later. Thank you, ma'am. I think I'll use the sink. Damien's already gotten up for thirds, and there's plenty. I load up a new paper plate with steak and whatever remains of the ribs and discreetly head inside. Thankfully, the sliding door is partially open, just enough so that I can use my foot to push the rest way open. I see... An, I see a PlayStation 2. Or a DVD player. That's an N64... No, that's a Super Nintendo controller, and those are Wii controllers. There's a coffee table in the living room. That's a good place, anyway. And the kitchen right there. I'll just rinse my hands off a bit. That's a nice kitchen. Making liberal use of the dish soap, I start scrubbing my hands thoroughly. While I feel the stickiness start to unstick itself, I look out the window. Damien's parents seem to be focused on Vinny, but Damien still shooting looks to the left. The hyperactive hybrid shoots up from his seat, disappearing from view. Wonder where he... Yeah, woo! Splash. Dang, clothes still on and all. The kid was serious about washing hands in the pool. Man, I could have gone for a dip myself. The AC in here makes a huge difference. It must be 90 degrees out today. There's plenty of soda, so I'm not in danger of dehydrating at least. But geez, I'm only noticing just how warm I still am from stepping inside. I'm surprised there's no steam rising from me. Looks a little red too. Good thing I didn't bring any... Crap. It's not that bad yet. Maybe the panes have some sunscreen around? No, they're reptiles. They wouldn't need any. Maybe I'll just have to deal with it. My knuckles start hurting from being wrung so much. The smell isn't gone yet, though. Anyway, should be clean enough to... Both of us free, still locked in the staring contest. The steak shoved in her mouth. She stares like a deer caught in headlights. She's 
spits the steak back on the plate in her lap and grips the inside of her sleeves. It takes me a moment to collect myself to muster up some conversation. Uh, yeah, your delivery came. You want a soda with that? The joke goes and laughed at. I tried. May as well. Huh? Need to get to the fridge. Oh, uh, sorry. I step to the side to give Olivia enough space. She rolls herself over to the fridge to opens it up and rummages through. We exchange a few awkward glances to the point that it's palpable in the air. So, what are you doing? Getting, getting a soda. The kid's taking your spot in the swimming pool. That's fine. I'm just gonna go crash in my room. Wasn't there still a party going on outside? I'm busy with art and stuff. Stuffing the soda can in her coat pocket, Olivia redirects herself and, with a flick of her tail, closes the fridge shut. But what about the party? What about it? It's still going on. And, look, I've got stuff to work on. Even though it's a holiday, it seems like the perfect time to get together with friends and family and... I'm not their family, if you haven't noticed. And I'm not going to be here for much longer. There's a new look from her. Was it because of what I said? Olivia? What? There's a couple different things dancing the top of my tongue I wish I could say. Some would be too intrusive, especially after what she just said. One, however, sticks out the most, especially after she had brought up working on it. I generally want to see Olivia's process. Would you, uh, mind some company? What? Some pretty seems pretty empty in the house to be on your lonesome, so maybe it'd be nice to hang out. Plus, I've been wanting to see your art for a while. Especially as I recall her freshman piece that's displayed right next to the principal's office. I'll even show you some of my stuff that I have in my portfolio drive in my backpack, after all. I have to hold back my laugh as a silly, strangled noise of surprise and confusion escapes her mouth. Is that an okay, then? No, it's just... I don't want anyone else in my room. Then how about the living room? I motion to the well-loved couch nearby. She hums and thought for a moment. Are you really that interested? Yes. I've been wanting to see your work ever since I found out that the cityscape piece and the gala was yours. Olivia clutches her hands together tightly. Okay, fine, fine. If you're so interested, you can watch. She wheels herself back towards the shut door. Need to get my stuff set up first, though. Sure, I'll be here on the couch. I kind of feel bad for missing out on the party, too, but I doubt I'll even get another chance like this. Olivia returns with a small easel already set up with half-finished painting. She takes a moment to shift herself from her wheelchair to the end of the couch next to me. Pretty, she's pretty close to me. I can feel her thigh barely brush against mine, but I'll try to pay, no, pay it no mind. The painting looks like a bust of a nondescript dino guy. Although, that's how, with how vibrant these guys are, it could easily be a portrait of someone specific. This isn't that good. She rips the page and crumbles it in her hand. Starting over then? Don't interrupt. She takes a deep breath. The paintbrush smears the canvas slowly and gracefully, although it's clear her nerves are getting to her. Okay. Wait. Olivia looks down for a moment before she jerks her head up, her face gaining a reddish hue. Dude, why, why did you scoot so close to me? I didn't? You're the one who sat next to me. Oh. She looks away for a moment, realizing how over-the-top her reaction was. Olivia does a double-take at me and furls her brow. What's wrong with your skin? I was born like this. Shut up, that's not. You know, you know what? Yes, it is. But I mean it's red. 
Oh yeah, I think I, I'm sunburned. As I look over the red splotch on my arm, Olivia raises a hand and touches it. Ow! Hi! Jeez, that really hurt. Yeah, it does. I didn't think to get sunscreen on the way over. There wouldn't happen to be any here, right? Apparently. Point taken. But... There's some of those pesky plants outside. Aloe is something, I think. Just snap a leaf off and... Oh, Mrs. Payne won't care, probably. I think I've heard something about the plant before. Yeah. Yeah, it does work. We, we throw them everywhere here, just in case. I used to have them in my backyard. Alright, guess I'll give it a shot. I actually used to love aloe vera plants. I get up and head back to the front door. Lo and behold, there were the fact a number of these spiky plants around. I walk up to the nearest one and carefully grab the leaf with a spot with, a dull, with dull spikes. It bends and snaps off pretty easily. Man, this looks about good enough to eat, but it probably tastes awful. You can eat them, in fact. Yes, you can. Is it really good for curing sunburned skin? Yes, it is. Not for some bird, but just because they make they, they do work wonders. Back inside, Olivia started painting again. She gazed intently at the page. And the plate of food I brought has been cleaned. Olivia holds one of the last ribs in her mouth like a cigarette. It wriggles around down between her teeth. Then she sees me. Then when she sees me, she crunches the bone in two and swallows the last bit of it whole. Speaking of, I just saw a giant gator yesterday. He's a big boy crossing the street. I bring up the yellow leaf. This it? She nods and extends a uh, hand to grab it. I hand her the thick leaf and she extends a single claw. Once she catches the edge of the skin, she makes a quick work peeling the husk off. You do that often? Not me. Sophia used to uses it a lot to make smoothies for family or healing salves for Vinny. They're pretty good. They're real pretty, too. Olivia blinks, coughs, and grimaces. To, uh, paint, I mean. Natural homemade healing recipe, huh? Gonna have to ask for that later. Could come in handy down the line. I move to remove my jacket to set the aloe so that the aloe can be applied properly. But I don't get far between and I notice Olivia's face turning a dark shade again. No. Uh, no need to remove your jacket. Just roll up your sleeves and put the jelly on your skin. She hands me the exposed aloe jelly, all while doing her best not to lock eyes with me. After rolling up my sleeves, I scoop up a dollop of the opaque substance. The feeling of relief hits me in the, the moment I spread it across my neck. Man, this feels good. I start applying more to my nose, cheeks, and most importantly, the top of my head. As I do, I watch Olivia continue her painting, extra attention on her brush strokes, <clears throat> the way she moves it down the canvas with such smoothness and gentleness shows her level of concentration. Not too rushed, but also not that overly focused on the art either. Using the last of the aloe to cover my arms, I'm fully covered in the rudimentary remedy. I take a second to throw the husk away in the kitchen trash, catching a glimpse of the party outside. Everyone looks like they're having a good time out there. Except for Mrs. Sophia, who's currently trying to chase the very soaked Vinny with a towel. Back on the couch, Olivia's painting is starting to take more defined shape. Unlike the cityscape piece, however, it looks more organic. She continues to paint in silence, occasionally doing a quick glance at me to see if I'm still watching. I don't want to poke at Olivia for no real reason, but this might just be my only chance to ask. Hey, Olivia? Your family, the Paines, they seem like a lively bunch. What's that supposed to mean? Like, I knew Damien was eccentric, but I can see he gets it from the rest of his family. First of all, the Paines are my godparents. Secondly, yeah, they are. So, how long have you known them? A 
Olivia pauses for a moment, brief brushstroke, but then continues. Practically my whole life. Damien and I have known each other since we were carpet car carpet crocs. And his, his parents have known my dad since well forever, since before we were even neighbors. Ah, friends of the family. Pretty much. Whole reason I, why I'm living with them then. She muzzle clamps shut. Forget what I just said. The words were spoken with a tone tinged bitter with something. The tone that I felt very familiar with. Whenever my own family is brought up. Sure. The only sounds left now are her brush strokes on the canvas. My focus turns back to the patch of blotchy red and pale acrylic soil. Oil slowly forming across the white expanse. Occasionally, Olivia's gray eyes would glance my way before going back to her work. Compared to the more rapid pace of the time-lapse art videos I had viewed, she was more deliberate with each of her movements. Pretty obvious, since most of those were done digitally. Another thing I don't consider. Still, staring at the painting in progress itself, there's something uncanny about it. It's now more formed, differently looking like something. Cupping my chin with one hand in contemplation, I use the other to try and trace out the peachy pale and vibrant red colors. Olivia looks back at me again, a glint of something shines through her eyes. Hold that pose. Hey, how long have you been using me as a layman doll? Her hand fails to cover up the snort that comes from her nose, followed by a gremlin-like cackle. <laughs> Consider it the price to see my process. I want a refund. <laughs> nope. Looking again, it's slowly becoming an oil bust of my burnt face. Look like looking in a mirror, eh? Can't you at least make get my good angle? Nope. Turning back to the mural de melanoma. Olivia starts adding in a blotch of cream by my head. I sigh, escapes my lips. Hey, I said stay still. Why? And I'm not that red. Another high-pitched giggle comes out of Olivia. It's called artistic license. Well, it needs to be renewed. Despite being the butt of her joke, I feel myself smiling. Must be the new sound from her. It's the first time I think I've seen her happy outside of Lavic Hand's class. And yeah, that laugh of hers is kind of infectious. The silence returns, though the mood feels much lighter now. I feel so stiff right now. I don't know how long I've been holding this pose now. If I had to guess, from the sunlight filtering of the house, it's been at least an hour. Meryl Dear Melanoma was almost done, and it was starting to staring back at me with the most intense eyes. Olivia's attention was left on the final detail. The hand holding my chin. I'm thankful she finished the sunglasses first because the reflected light from the sliding glass door had been searing my retina. Olivia? Hush. She turns her head and focuses entirely on the hand held by my ear. Pupils moving rapidly to try and take in every detail. Her fingers twitch as her hand hovers over the painted hand. Her eyes are now shifting between my hand and her, my eyes. Her hand now quaking and growing redness suffused in her face. The more she looks toward my eyes, the more her arms shakes and face brightens. Finally, she turns away from me entirely, bringing both her arms and her and with her and away from me than the canvas. Okay. Okay. Her cheeks puff out as she exhales a whole breath. Okay. Finally, she turns her cherry red face to the canvas to inspect the near complete portrait. I'll come back to this later. Can I? Yeah, yeah. You can drop your hand now. Finally. I lay back on the couch, feeling my spinal cord pop in rapid succession said your hand. Can't. Attempt to stretch my arm in front of me. And because of my stepped muscles, my forearm is pulled backwards toward my face. I repeat the motion several times, the movement helping to ease the muscles until finally my arm doesn't feel spring-loaded. 
While I was busy trying to fix my arm, Olivia was packing up the canvas. Uh, that's about it. You can go join the others or whatever. She drags the canvas, easel, and acrylic tubes back to her room. I wonder if she'll keep that one. And I wonder if she'll stay in her room again. Hmm. We've been inside for a while. I don't think anyone outside has noticed we've been gone. Vinny and Damien seemed to accept that Olivia would stay inside. But... Wait. I've caught her off guard. I'm going outside. Would it be rude of me to leave without... It would be rude of me to leave without saying goodbye, at least. She looks at me quizzically. Sure. But I think I'll try staying until the end. This will probably this has probably been the best day I've had since I moved here. And my first real friends in a long while. I'm glad to have been invited. She's not leaving, but she's scanning me suspiciously. Damien's been a great friend and his folks have been really nice to me. Better than my own parents, even. You're lucky to have them, I think. I guess. Good for you. Have fun with that. I really need to. I think you should come along. She freezes. What? Her eyes widen and some of the color leaves her face. No, I can't. Why not? Mr. and Miss Payne? They already have Vincent and Damien to worry about, and right now they're hosting all the other guests. They've got plenty to deal with already. I'm not worth the accommodations. Just leave it. Let them be normal. Even then, like it's like I said, I don't have much time left. That's a little overly harsh. And it had it was very argument and it was every argument she had. They're the kind of arguments that come from desperation and guilt to convince herself it's for her own good. Maybe it's a little presumptuous, but that's at least the sort of thoughts I've been reading. Reading notes from my parents allotting me resources like I'm just an anthrop anthropomorphized mouth. Certainly doesn't seem like I'm worth it to them out sometimes. But they're your godparents, right? They're helping your folks, yeah, but they chose to have you here. Because they want you to be normal. That doesn't... Uh, a normal part of their family, I mean. I don't think they'd have you here if they didn't want that. Oh, please go on and tell me more about my own family. Her voice is sardo sardonic. She's not making eye contact anymore, but she's listening intently. This is all the stuff she's known already. But you're absolutely right about one thing. You don't have much time left. Neither do I, honestly, even if it's mostly because of moving. You know what they say about rolling stones gather no moss? In that way, we're in the same boat. Give it a shot. There's some perfectly good moss right out there. What? Okay. I'll try it with you. That analog was pretty dumb, but you're right. The back door squeaks open. Even with sunglasses, I wince at the sudden brightness. God, I'm blind! I take a step out and stretch my back, working out the last bit of stiffness from my shoulders. Olivia still waits at the threshold of the door. What are you waiting for? A curtain call? Hmm? With a grin, I draw the sliding door even wider and with a beckoning wave, attempting to usher Olivia out as if I were her personal attendant. Cut that out, don't make it weird. Despite her words, her tone is more humored than annoyed with me. Relax, nobody was even looking. But it looks like there's definitely no more food left. Yeah, about right. As Olivia rolls down the wooden ramp I hadn't noticed, we catch Damien in the, at the bottom step. Olivia? At the table, the heads turn toward us, looking surprised, etched on their faces, most of them. Instead of answering him verbally, Olivia's hands come up as a nervous wave. The rest of the party resumes their prior discussion, although maybe a bit more livelier than before. Hey, cool to see you here out, out here again. Hey, Damien, 
Why are you all the way all the way over here? I can't stand to be by Liz's uncle when he's eating. He's got those fibrous teeth. Ugh. Like a blue whale house? Yeah, it freaks me out. Is his dentist must make a fortune. <laughs> yeah. Hey Olivia, what are you doing back out here? You forgot something? No, I just thought it'd be good to enjoy the weather while it lasts. Damien perks up with his frills undulating. No, Damien, stop that. Olivia quivers. Damien grin grows wider and the frills start moving faster. Ew, stop it. Even I'm getting unnerved by how these things move. Damien. I wish they would have animated that. Sorry, you know these things got a mind of their own. Finally, those weird flaps still. Dude, we're just comp we're just complaining about Mr. Ferris and his Dude, you were just complaining about Mr. Ferris and his teeth. At least he can keep his mouth shut. Hey, hey, I could always wear a beanie. No, you can't. Remember the last time you tried? Both Damien and Olivia share a laugh over some event they're privy to. When they finish, Damien asks the million dollar question. So, are you going to join in or... She turns her head my way and I give her a supportive thumbs up. Yeah. God, this this game is so good. I love them. I love them. I love the devs. They are doing a fantastic job. I want everyone to support this game. Damien finally stands from the steps and we all start heading toward the table. Each party goer greets us when we approach. The loudest from... Libby! Hey, hey, hey. You finally came to play again! A rambunctious boy hoots and hollers as he bounces in circles around her. Olivia huddles her arms and looks aside my direction, feeling the stares from the table. I give her a reassuring thumbs up. Actually, this is perfect. Thank you, Vinny. This is something Olivia is able to give when she was so worried about taking. I hope she goes for it. Um, I'm a little tired, Vinny. What? No, come on, Livy. You promised we'd play today. Like old times. I... Please? Oh, all right, all right, you win. I did promise. You want to play canon then? Yeah, yeah, canon! All right, then, ready? Ready, round loaded, fire! Oh God, this was a bad idea. Woo! Woo! Randy. Relax, Soph. Vinny's still young. Michael, Vinny, be careful. I'm okay, Mom. Ooh. Have you gotten stronger, Olivia? No, shut up. Anyway. Can we do it again, Liv? Olivia smiles and pats his head. It's weird seeing it, but she readies Vincent for another launch. The gator girl has a bright, toothy smile I've never thought she'd have. Whee! That is cute. Uh, Mr. Payne? <laughs> Woo! Alright, I get it. Vincent? Yeah, Dad? No more cannonball today. Olivia and Vincent share a disappointed look. Now, now, there's a lot more things you two can do. Vincent perks up and immediately rushes off. I know! Olivia turns back to the rest of the group with an uneasy smile. Miss Payne steps forward, her hands held up and wa wavering. Olivia? Hi, Auntie. Miss Payne and her husband approach both with nervous smiles. When she speaks, it's with a certain restraint, holding her excitement back. As though worried if it showed too much, she'll change her mind and go back in. I... I didn't miss much, right? I'm so glad you came out, dear. The older woman kneels in front of her and wraps her arms around Olivia. I... it's been a long time, little Ace. Randy's hand ruffles her hair, while his other hand also encircles both Olivia and Sophia... And while Olivia does her best to avoid his palm, I can see the tiny smile on her face. Time seemed to pick up speed after Olivia had come out. Damien and his father returned to the grill, managing to prep and cook a final serving of meaty goodness for the early dinner. 
I decided to go for a seconds and get a few scraps of this and that. I nearly dropped my foo when I got a rough pat on the shoulder from behind. It's Mr. Payne. He looks down at me with a thankful smile. Miss Payne and Miss Mr. Ferris continue their conversation till Mr. Ferris' throat ran dry. And the rest of us had to contend with the hyperactive child with an armory of foam dart guns. I felt bad for Liz. She'd come she'd become a one woman shooting gallery for the boy. And Olivia? And me? And Damien? But at least he looked apologetic about it. But now things are winding down. The food is officially all gone. Everyone is exhausted physically and mentally, and yet thoroughly satisfied emotionally. Olivia pads by me, having returned to the pool to cool down and stretch out. There's your favorite image, everybody. Also, the art is beautiful. She a cutie. There was just one thing left to really cap this off. Okay, everyone. I hollered to everyone currently on deck, grouped up nicely for me. Looking through the viewfinder of my propped-up camera, I adjust the focus to ensure everyone is captured perfectly in the picture. Alright, on three, give me your biggest smiles. One! Wait. Olivia... Olivia turns away from the camera and looking toward Damien. With a grin, Damien waves for me. Dude, you gotta be... Dude, you gotta be in this too. There's a nod and words of agreement from everyone. Well, it's been a while since I used that mode, so why not? Setting the time delay along with the sports mode, I'm sure with 10 rapid succession shots to at least be in one of them perfectly. And I can always do a post-production on it. Ensuring that the focus is still fine, I click the shutter button and keep the count in mind. 30, 30, 29, 28. By 13, I've settled myself next to Damien and above Olivia. All right, nine, eight, seven. I feel something wrap around my ankle and press back against, against my back on four. Three, two, one. Ah! My camera's flash goes off ten times and I'm pushed over by Damien and pulled into the pool by Olivia. September 25th. So that's where we're going to end it. This one was really cute. So thank you guys so much for your support on this series. Please go support the devs. Uh, they This is out on Steam. Hopefully it'll be out on all platforms soon. Please go pick up a copy and give a fantastic review. I know I will. So thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, subscribe store, or become a member on YouTube. It does help a ton. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day or night. Bye, guys.